Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation to our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us. So that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. The reading from Isaiah, the 56th chapter. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. 
and the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those who already gathered. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to him. Our responsive reading is from Psalm 67. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing to the Lord. For they judge the peoples of their enemies and guide all the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. The second reading is a reading from Romans, the 11th chapter. Paul writes, I ask then as God rejected his people, by no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable, just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. Word of God, word of life, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. So we'll open your eyes as you are able. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? What comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. 
or does it really matter? Our faith journey is not a linear journey. We do not start at point A and go to point B, but our faith journey has its ups and downs. There are times when it feels like our faith is sitting on a firm foundation, and there are times when it feels like our faith is washing away like sand on a beach. There are times perhaps we take our faith for granted, like when we don't read our Bible or make time for prayer, because we know that Jesus will always be there. But we also know that isn't true that we can't put our faith aside for a later time or when it's more convenient. We need to continually grow our faith, to immerse ourselves in scripture, to worship and to pray, just like we need to tend to our physical bodies every day. We need to care for our spirits daily. And then when the way gets tough, we can cry out shouting if need be to our Savior. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Us Germanic Lutherans tend to be stoic. We don't shout in church. If we clap, it's always on beats one and three. We try not to pray out loud because that's what the pastor's for. But scripture tells us it's not only okay, but good to do those things. It's okay to have feelings. Look at the Psalms. It's okay to be persistent. Look at the mother today. God created us, all of us, including our emotions. So why would God be upset with us for expressing them? And here's even more of a challenge. It comes as we learn to listen to other people's emotions. It's so easy, like the disciples, to try to shut down others. We don't want to hear their emotions because oftentimes either we can't relate or it is a little too close to home. And isn't that precisely the problem in our world today? We don't understand why someone else feels the way they do. Or we don't understand the experiences we've had that might be different than our own. So we try to get them to be quiet. Like the woman, people are hurting. People are crying out, and in order to silence them, others yell louder. And pretty soon there's nothing but noise and anger and heartache, and in the midst steps Jesus. Into the midst, Jesus shows compassion. Into the midst, Jesus cares for a woman who is not the same gender, the same nationality, or the same religion. But Jesus hears her cries, and Jesus cares for her. So perhaps this is the real question for us today. How do we react to and show compassion to someone whose experiences are different than our own? In my human resource management class this week, the topic is learning to work internationally. Our homework assignment is to pick a country, to study their mores, to research their business philosophy and practices, and to create an introduction. Now, people and companies who work internationally succeed when they take time to get to know the culture first, when they learn and listen and accept. For example, Denmark is a group-oriented business environment. Networks are based on loyalty and longevity, often dating back to those relationships formed in elementary school. It is rude to be late, and it is rude to ask for favors. You build trust by building up others, and then when you are in need, the group will care for you. It's very different from our individualized culture, where it is each man, woman, and child for themselves to be the best at all costs. In order to be successful, you have to know the culture, to respect their experiences, thoughts, and feelings. 
One woman talked about giving a presentation in a Middle Eastern country when a man got up and walked out. When she asked why, she found out that it was time for prayer. By not asking those questions, by not getting to know those around her, she made a huge mistake. She created a great offense, one that cost lots of time and energy to repair. But she did, and they did. And she learned to build in prayer time to their individual meetings. She learned what it was to be open to conversation in building those relationships. So back to our reading. This woman, this mother, she persisted as any of us would when it comes to our hurting children. Parents can relate to that. We understand what it means to cry out in prayer, even if it's in the dark, quiet nights alone in our rooms. Most of us can relate to that. We know that Jesus is Lord, Lord over heaven and earth, and that Jesus gave his life for our brokenness. In just a moment, we'll confess that again. So if Jesus has done all of that for us, what prevents us from believing that Jesus will be there when we cry out? Now, I have to admit, I struggled this week with this text because of a word. I wanted to avoid that word persisted today because I don't want us to be distracted by the political drama that is now tied to that word. But maybe, just maybe, this is the time. As we draw closer to the election, we're hearing more and more yelling, more and more name-calling, more and more lies being spread. So perhaps this is the very time we need to persist more than ever, to listen to the fears, to listen to the experiences of others, to really try to understand from another's point of view. And here's perhaps the hardest, to agree to disagree respectfully. And then, to remember. To remember that God came to earth in human form so Jesus could love and heal Jews and Gentiles alike. So my friends, persist. Persist in all that Jesus has called you to be. Persist in growing your faith life. Persist in seeking God in prayer. Persist in loving and praying for both your friends and your enemies. And like the woman in our story today, never, never underestimate persistence in the God in whom she believed. Amen.
I invite you to rise as you are able as we join together in confessing our faith with the saints of every time and age. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, you gather the church to be part of your mission as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. As Jesus acknowledged the great faith of a woman from outside his people, Help your church discover and find blessing in the faith of people we might reject. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have blessed us with the bounty of the earth. Grant your grace to all your creatures that the earth will flourish. Relieve waters choked by garbage, renew soils stripped of nutrients, and refresh the air all creatures need to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call the nations to be glad and sing for joy. Let your way be known among all the nations of the world, now divided by competing interests, contending alliances, and consumed by enormous worries. Bless us and make your face shine upon all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show unexpected mercy, kindness, and generosity. We pray for those who do not have enough, for outcasts, in our villages, cities, and towns, and for those who need your healing, especially those we name at this time. Lord, in your mercy. In you we live and move and have our being. Grant our congregation grace to find our life refreshed in you. Accompany us in the rhythms of late summer. Give us rest and renewal and strengthen us for mission in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your eternal promises are more than we could, uh, could ever imagine. As you gather all the saints, join us also with them on the great day of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated. At this time, I invite you to remove the clear plastic layer from the top and take the bread into your hand. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. Please rise as you are able. The body and blood of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift. In faith for you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament, and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, thy paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us in your love supporting us through jesus christ our lord amen neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor power nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of god in christ jesus god the creator Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.